Let's talk about hip release in 1990 gait pose. So this is 1990 gait pose with the foot usually a little bit further away than a 90-90 kneeling position would be. So this is my starting position. I do it slowly first. I'm gliding into the hip release. The pelvis is about at the 45 degree angle, but it's lifted. The spine is elongated. The ankle is in dorsiflexion, the heel grounded. The knee travels over the base of the second toe and it can go further forward than the toes. It's actually easier when it goes forward of the toes. You get more recoil on your way back. Now, if I do it that slowly, I need to press my foot into the floor away from the body. It will lift me back up. If I have a rhythm, that matches my body's fascial elasticity, it becomes very, very effortless. So a few times I will do it in my rhythm, the rhythm that suits my body. So that would be my rhythm. Now what we are looking at is adductive fascia, elastically lengthen and recoil like an elastic band. And then also Achilles tendon, plantar fascia, elastically lengthen like an elastic band. Now, that's not what they exactly do. It's not like an elastic band going really far apart and together, but that is the sense. And then the longitudinal arches of your foot, they open a little bit and they integrate as you are coming back. Pelvic floor stays engaged at all times. This is no end range joint movement. So let's see if you can see the difference. If I just drop to end range, I have to push myself out. So this is a drop to end range and I've got to push. So before my joints are at the end range, I'm already on my way back. So my intention is going away from where I'm going. I bent the knee, flex the ankle so I can recoil to the other side, like a knee bend to jump, a knee bend to jump, very round, very soft, no sharp edges. I hope that made sense.